The following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter in each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence. You are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 91. Holy crap. Holy crap. We're like it's, two months away from 100. You're always in shock every time I say the number at this point. Uh, I think maybe 20 minutes into this episode, I'm not going to remember the introduction at all. So there you go. So that's, that happens every single episode anyway. So it's <laughs> I mean, you're just if anything, you're on brand at this point. Who are you? Where am I? <laughs> Anyways, your perfectly marketed and branded host for the day are Chris and Savannah. Sweet Savannah, if you're nasty. Don't be nasty, uh, it's disgusting. I was gonna say, like, that's a whole new direction <laughs> for you. I don't think you take we haven't even done an OnlyFans joke in a long time, and you're already bringing that up now. <laughs> I actually got a new job, so uh I don't need an uh an Oh, so now you are sweet Savannah. That's like what they call yeah. you at work, eh? You know, usually you yeah, don't usually really name that profession. You could be like be sweet, quite, sweet, sweet Sandy or something. To be quite honest, though, using my first name would probably be perfect anyway. So, yeah, I guess if you were like a dancer or something like that. Anyways, yeah, right. wow, I'm going way the hell off track here. Go see Savannah at the latest club dancing. Mm -hmm, That's all mm -hmm. I can say. I wouldn't say the name. Uh, but yes, welcome to the show. Oh, my God. Episode 91. What a significant number, at least in my head, because 91 was technically the musical year that started this podcast. Oh. I mean, when we looked at Pearl Jam's 10. Yeah, I would not have pieced that together. So there you go. 90 episodes ago was an album from 1991. So 91, what a special episode. And so, hey, thank you for joining us today and being a part of this and, uh, you know, being a part of the musical community and everything like that. Truly appreciate it. So if you like what you see and we're here today, do us a favor and do one or many of all the things I'm about to list. Like, subscribe, rate, share, comment, follow. All of those things really do help build us up in like every algorithm, puts eyes and ears on the prize and everything like that. Makes us feel more confident and how much we suck but it like makes us feel good about how much we suck you know instead of just like feeling like crap about it and and chris where can people go to find places to like share rate follow comment and the other thing you said subscribe like what you can That's do on it. youtube for example <laughs> you can go to write the record.ca and you can do all of those things there and find all the different ways to do it all the streaming platforms that we're on all the social media pages that we're on you can also join the rtr club for five bucks a month on kobe.com slash write the record which gets you bonus content early access to content uh you get a shout out we'll review your band's music uh there's probably something else that i forgot but you could do that there's also merch over there too and you can request albums all of that at rate the record.ca. So one more time, just because we all need a gentle reminder for a third lucky time, rate the record.ca. Rate the record.ca. Haha, <laughs> fourth time. I'm not doing the six <laughs> times again. I think I did that like last week. <laughs> yeah, no, that's enough. That's enough. We'll 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 backload it before we end. I think at this point I'm just gonna have to like put more on the website just to make it worth people's time to say it four times in a row. Yeah, it'll it'll be like one of those 90s websites where it's like every hundredth visitor gets this huge seizure inducing flashing screen that says like, you won a million dollars. And then you click it and you're like, oh, I can trust those two. They look like trustworthy people. And then you click it on the website and then a whole bunch of pop ups and then we've infiltrated your computer. And then all it is is playing all of our episodes front to back 24 seven through your computer. That's the worst Trojan horse I've ever heard in my life. The like the whole Trojan. idea? Okay, I was going to say the whole idea or the fact that it's us. No, Well, just, I mean, every Trojan, but the fact that it's like the RTR Trojan is just, I don't know, man. That's I, I, I wouldn't consider that good branding, but what do I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very evil. Didn't I say that we're good at marketing and branding like right in the beginning? But anyways, uh, if you've been here before, you know we're not good at branding and marketing. So, hey, welcome back to the podcast. I guess we're good enough that you decided to come back and you enjoy what we do. So glad to have you back. But if you're new, welcome to the show. Uh, remember this face because this is the face of like every product that we have. That's not true. None of our faces are on the product. 
But anyways, that means you likely don't know what we do here on the show. We do a lot more than be stupid. Each week, Savannah and I will choose an album. We'll discuss it. I mean, we, we'll choose an album, be completely random, whatever the hell we want to, which is like this week, for example. Uh, we will do them by request. We've done plenty. We got plenty more. And actually, I think uh, we got one, what, two weeks from now. We got another one. Yes. We got like two more yeah. after that type thing. We got a lot this season. And we do album anniversaries. We just did Muse recently with their um, the 20th anniversary of Absolution. We've done plenty before that, too. So you can always go back and check it out. But regardless, we will choose an album. We'll discuss it at length from front to back. We rank the songs and then we rank break the, the record. record. You nailed it that time. You Did actually I actually? It. I started. I, I think I'm done the word right before you even start, but I can see the hopefulness in your eyes that I'm not going to fuck this up. I was staring at you that time because I know last week you purposely jumped ahead and I, like, I was like, okay, whatever, fucking haha, funny. You're, you're like the parent that glares at their child from across the room after they caught them doing something bad. And you're just glaring. You're like, okay, I think my mom's mad at me. I'm going to stop now. It's like taking my kid to Boston Pizza and they're making fart noises at the table. I'm just staring at them because I can't yell at them mm-hmm. in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And just exactly. like, just wait until we get home, young man. Yes, exactly. Or just wait till your father gets home. It's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I am my father. Wait, what? <laughs> what the hell's what's, what's going on here? Now I'm just confused. I think I just opened a time paradox. Well, anyways, uh, speaking of time paradoxes, this has nothing to do with that because today for episode 91, we're taking a look at Gob and their 2000 album, The World According to Gob. Uh, now, I understand this one might be a little more obscure. I, I mean, I chose this <laughs> album, uh, but if you are a millennial, Canadian millennial to be specific, <laughs> then chances well, are you grew up around the year 2000, 2001, and maybe a little later on hearing a, at least a few songs from this album. So you'll yeah. definitely remember things like For the Moment, I Hear You Calling, Sleepyhead, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I definitely have a lot of memories of this one. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a lot, but I definitely know track one and two. So, I mean, I had that going for me. Well, I mean, I hear you calling had a great music video. Oh, uh, I vaguely remember them. Um, the zombie but... cheerleaders on the football field. I would have to watch it again. I know I've seen it. You just and watch did... much loud all the time. Th- this would just appear on regular much music back in the day. Oh, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, but to literally everyone else who's not Canadian, maybe it'll be a little more obscure for you. That's OK. So let me explain a little bit about Gob and their album, The World According to Gob. So Gob is a pop punk band out of Langley, British Columbia, or also Vancouver. I've read both anyways. Uh, the band started with founding members Tom Thacker on lead vocals and lead guitar and Theo Godzinakis on rhythm guitar and vocals. For the sake of today's album, the band also consists of Gave Mantle on drums and percussion and Craig Wood on ba- bass and backing vocals. Those first three members are still um, actively in the band where the bass has changed up to six times like to date of this episode. So oh just God. a very revolving door position. Although Craig would, I believe, lasted the longest, but I can't confirm that off the top of my head. But anyway, the band originally formed in 1993 and would go on to release their self-titled EP in 1994. Through doing various split EPs with other local punk bands, they would eventually release their first full-length studio album, Too Late, No Friends, in 1995, which, by the way, has my summer anthem on it, the song Soda, which is like, I listen to that song the first day of summer every single year, and also the last day of summer, just to kind of like sandwich it all in. It's, it's the best. I'm almost positive that I've heard that song before. It's only a minute and a half long. Uh, and it is. Are they so in a swimming? Fun. Are they in a swimming pool for any of it? Uh, a lake. They're riding bikes Ooh. a lot. There's like a dude, a fat dude, barbecuing in the backyard and like pouring soda all over the barbecue. I think I know that song. Yeah, it's it's an amazing song. It's my summer anthem all day, every day of the summer. Oh, yeah. Uh, so God would begin making the rounds of small tours until they released their second album, How Far Shallow Takes You, in 1998. Once 2000 rolled around, they released their most prolific album to date, one that would give them the them. Oh, Jesus. I could, I swear to God, my eyes just crossed <laughs> right there. One that would give them vast radio exposure, ma- mainly. Oh, what the hell is that? Vast radio exposure, mainly festival sports. What the fuck does that mean? OK, many festivals. And they also did sports media as well because they had their songs licensed out to uh, movies, TV shows and video games, as I said. Wow, I was terrible at writing that. Anyways, The World According to God was released October 10th, 2000. So actually pretty close to the um, the point of recording this. Through Network Records, the album was produced by Neil King, who has done work with The Smiths, Primus, Green oh. Day, Rancid, Joe Satriani, Jimmy Eat World, and many more. 
The album received mostly positive reviews, including a 4 out of 5 by Alternative Press, 3.5 out of 5 by Sputnik Music, and a favorable review by CMJ New Music Monthly, which I think is the Canadian Music Journal. Yeah. Um, but those... Uh, but those easy to please folks that all music only gave it a 2.5 out of 5. Actually, sorry, Dang. 2 out of 5. Dang, okay, well. We found something they didn't like that much. Yeah, that's a that's a solid C right there. Shit. This is one of those things where it was a pretty strong friendship between us before, but then it's like as you age, you kind of like gradually drift apart from that friend. That's, yeah, that's right. That's what all music is at this point. We call them acquaintances at this point, but. yeah. But now they're just so easy to please, obviously. You're you're leaving them on red while you're calling up Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, because at least they're the B-tier enthusiasts <laughs> that we can get along with. <laughs> the album only managed to uh, get gold in Canada, and that was actually about it. I couldn't find any official information, but the single I Hear You Calling essentially put the band on the map with vast radio play. I, I know I've heard that in many different games and everything like that. The, as I said before, the video was super cool and everything like So, yeah, that one essentially sold the album it did well in the charts and yeah the other singles of the album include for the moment that's the way and no regrets interesting this it was a little harder to find information on both these things because even the wikipedia articles on them are like small and there wasn't like too Mm -hmm. much information about the band either so kind of just had to piece things together as i went i have one one tidbit from the singer uh he's in some 41 what like theo or Um, tom tom what does Tom do? He, guitar? Yeah. Uh, he replaced Dave when Dave left and then stayed in when Dave came back. So I believe that they're a five piece now. Well, although um, I, I guess it can't be recent, though, because I know that like some 41 was oh. just starting a tour and Gob is on tour with Billy Talent right now. Or that might have just ended. So I don't know. Um, it, Wikipedia says that he joined uh, following Dave's uh Departure in oh, 2006. A, yeah, it was a while ago. But then when he came back in 2015, uh, Tom ended up staying. So, hey, that was kind of cool. now Derek uh, Whitby or Wilby or whatever his name is, he's in the hospital right now, I think. Oh, is he? I think he has pneumonia. Oh, shit. That's not so, good. Uh, that's, that's very unfortunate. Good. Hopefully he pulls through. We've never oh, done yeah. some 41 album. We're going to have to do that eventually. Yeah. But for now, for the moment, we have to start the Gob album. So song number one for the moment. Okay, so my third note here, you've already mentioned, so I'm just going to get it out of the way, has to be on a skateboard or snowboarding game soundtrack somewhere. It It's a simple song. It's very fun. I think it's a great intro to the album. Great intro to the album. And also, like, I could see this as being like a good concert opener, too. Yeah. Because just like that intro alone, I can see the crowd getting hyped because it's just that like that guitar loop with like the, the hi-hat symbol just kind of going for like a good 20 seconds or so. Yeah. I can see that going for like a minute solid in a concert opening and just kind of like people getting amped as the stage kind of like fills with like a bit of smoke and then boom, the guitar's yeah. kicking. I think that'd be great. You'd be a pretty good uh, stage producer with that. I, I have ideas. And I also, <laughs> like, I would love the idea of performing like a light show for a concert. But the problem is like, I don't know the first thing about that kind of stuff. Do you know who does a really good light show? You? Stephen, Wil- Stephen Wilson. No, he doesn't do it. He has people do it for him. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> I, I you're, like, the- you're like, his light show is good. He must not have had any hand in it whatsoever. Pretty much. And I actually just read an article recently about how he's like essentially begging people to give Porcupine Tree credits. Like, I'm not the only one. I don't boss them around. I'm like, I can yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wik- Wikipedia. Yeah. Wikipedia says that uh, Porcupine Tree started off as a Stephen Wilson thing. He can't rewrite history, man. No, no, he can't. No, he, can he make new history when he's on his own? I will insult him all day, but we have to talk about God. <laughs> yes, please. Let's start. You're the one who brought him up. I know because I like rubbing it in just a little. I'll just tear him right back down. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, kind of a blanket statement for the album, although it doesn't really necessarily stick for the entire album uh despite the bass not being mixed super well the production on this album is actually really great overall Mm -hmm. although the bass does stand out in some other tracks as i went down the line like obviously this was written in the very first note i did so i didn't have the retrospect of remembering the entire album which by the way uh i i've been listening to this album since 2002 essentially although say that's kind of weird i haven't been listening to it since because I think around 2002, 2003, I listened to it a lot. And then I 
had not listened to it again except for like yeah. maybe one or two songs so this yeah. whole album it's been like t- almost two decades actually it has been two decades since i've like sat through wow, the entire flashbacks. thing flashbacks uh but yeah so the bass does show up on other songs not so much in this one and a, f- a handful of other songs too but the production's really good uh the guitars are like really nice and crisp in this one i mm-hmm. uh, like t- i love the good distorted tone on it too uh the vocals always have a decent polish on them uh drum tones are great all around too and they're not like really loud and pounding everything like that but they serve yeah. a good purpose so yeah I-, I love the production on this one uh and this one yeah just a really catchy track all around i love the energy and pacing to kick everything off so i mean we're on a good note so far all right. So after all of those words that you said, um, <clears throat> one of my notes just says, I'm always a little unsure how to critically review pop punk songs because a lot of what I want to say is just, yep, they definitely know how to play chords because I'm like, all it is is just like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'm like, okay, I, I kind of got to spice this up a little bit. Unfortunately, it gets a little spiced up farther into the review. So you get bare bones for this one. Melody is nice and catchy. Um, I like this one, but it definitely took this review to realize that I've heard this song before. Heard it the first time with, this is a little familiar. I've listened to Gob before. Maybe it's that. Second time, no, I've definitely heard this song. Um, We got a danceable score for every song on this album, whether it sucks or not. Danceable score is 8 out of 10 if you clench your butt cheeks to the beat. And jump around and hop around with all the other pop punk kids in the crowd. I mean, if you're clenching your butt cheeks, you can't really jump unless you're like propelling yourself. But I mean, to each well, depending on how really. you jump, you might have to clench to get yeah. that like little extra inch, you know? That's true. But can you do? You oh. Use your whole lower body and leap up. Now I'm just imagining just sta- jumping up and down like a pogo stick and just clenching your ass cheeks. I, I was imagining you're gonna be like, hold on a second, camera goes off, and you leave the mic on, and I just hear like loud thuds. Oh on my your god! Floor. I'm just like, oh my, oh my god. god, she's trying it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, doesn't work. And I rolled an ankle. And I might have pulled one of my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. I mentioned that later, too. Uh, but that's all that I got for that one. I actually like that. Pulling butt muscles. He must have been doing a lot of work for that one. So we'll move on to song number two. Again, the song that essentially sold the album, I Hear You Calling. I have always heard Weezer in this song. Um, this is not the only song that I, I think there's both three songs on this track or on this record that I'm like, yeah, I can definitely hear Weezer in this. Um there are some like guitar bends in the verse. Never noticed them before, but I really like it. I feel like they add some interest because it's something I just haven't heard before. So that was cool. Uh, but otherwise, straightforward song like they all kind of are for the most part. Some exceptions. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, familiarity uh, for, <laughs> for like a better I mean, term. Oh, really? Real. Yeah, you, you won't know until we get there. I, mean, I could be lying. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is another insanely catchy song too. Just kind of like the first one, like every melody feels like fun and memorable in its own way on this one. So maybe that's the nostalgia kicking in, but I just generally like the way this one sounds. Yeah. It's just a well-written song over like overall interesting choice to have like a guitar solo play, like the lower octave too, like the one that happens towards the end of the song, like in the bridge, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, cause usually, you know, you always have guitar solos like in the higher end of the guitar and everything like that. But like, yeah. this was like a lower one kind of like where the power chords being played. And I, I really like the tone of that uh, tone of that actually. Like it is, it felt fitting. It felt different. So it was interesting and it actually sounded cooler. So points for that too. Mm-hmm. I, 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 <sighs> the fuck does this mean uh i guess i had mentioned the vocal melody yeah for the last song because i put again another good vocal melody and even though the choruses hold the hook the verses sound pretty good as well um it doesn't feel cheap to just repeat the chorus for the bridge solely because i don't expect much from any band that classifies themselves as, as punk in any way um, and it gives me very similar vibes to the first track. Uh, it's really just borderline generic rock. Uh, not a lot of pop. Well, maybe pop. Uh, not a lot of punk yet. Uh, but it does sound like very digestible pop rock. And I'm not surprised that this was picked as a single. Uh, out of all of them, if I had no idea, I probably would have picked this one first. I think for the moment, definitely has a more punkier feel than this one. Yeah, this one, this yeah. one feels like a rock track, but like for the moment yeah. was like kind of like a straight shot, fast track and like a more aggressive vocals and everything like that. So it definitely felt more punky. Oh, yeah. But very poppy in the sense of, yeah, yeah like the c- composition's like straight down to a T. Like this is how you write like a catchy hook. Yeah. 
And do you have a damn, sorry, continue. I was was just going to say, there's nothing wrong with that because obviously it just sells the record. Yeah. I just have a danceable score. Um, My last thing, nine out of 10 danceable because the chorus is a nice little dance break to catch your breath because you're 35. Why did you think you could move like that? Psych you thought. Right? And that that's the whole jumping in the air. Like I might roll my ankle, twist my knee. Who fucking knows? If I remember I was gonna watch the video coming into this too, because like I had remembered about the zombie cheerleaders in the in on the football field and the bands performing. And I think they get torn apart at the end. I don't remember. Huh? But I think the zombie cheerleaders do part of the thriller dance. So that, <laughs> you can always do the thriller dance of the song if you want to. They if they could, you can too. That I, you know what? That is true. Thank you. You can do anything you put your mind to, but if you're too old, then maybe put your mind on something else. <laughs> With that piece of optimism, we'll move on because I have no regrets saying that. And song number three, no regrets. The puns are back, baby. <laughs> oh, God. So the drums at the beginning definitely give me I want candy. Um, I was trying to sing it. It definitely did not turn out that way. No, not even close. <laughs> yeah, no. The beginning definitely, uh, definitely got that for me. Um, I, I was actually not sure what song I would rather hear. Um, and it starts to feel and sound like one of those, I'll pretend I'm from Boston, but really I just want a reason to have a fiddle in my band songs. You, you don't need to be from Boston to have a fiddle in your band. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying there are a lot of bands that are all like, oh, we're going to play some uh, American Irish music. Ha ha, we're from Massachusetts. Meanwhile, they're from like, Washington State. We know. We see you. Liars. Who was it? Was it John Fogarty who had that song Born on the Bayou? But then it And he's from, from California. I think, yeah, I think it was fucking on the show liar. we talked about that. Yeah. You're not a fucking liar. Yeah, it's like we're a bunch of East Coast boys. Like, fuck you, you're from Toronto. Mm-hmm. Like, you're a city boy. Yeah. Shut up. Exactly. So I kind of got that vibe from this, um, but I didn't score it according to that. I just thought it was funny to put it in. Um, This is one of those songs where the bass definitely stood out a little more, even for like a little bit. So that was nice, Uh, especially because when you get into pop punk albums, like I like the tone of the bass in pop punk. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a bit of a sharper tone. You can actually hear the strings in it, but it still has like a good bassy ring to it. Yeah. Maybe it's a little mid scoop, but at the same time, I don't know. It, it, it fits the genre. I like it, so I like when I hear it, and so that's why I wrote a note about it. Um, this definitely feels like it could have like come out in like the mid to late nineties with that style, of, like fast uppy pop punk style. Like yes. I, I, I get it. This came out in two thousand, but like this feels like it could have been written in like ninety seven, for example. Yeah, because like I don't know. It's just like yeah, at, at that point when like if, if you think back to like early Sum forty one or like Blink one eighty two before Enema of the State where it was just like a lot of like faster pop punk and everything like that, maybe even Green Day to an extent. But like, yeah. that's kind of like the era I was thinking of. So I thought that was pretty cool. And who knows, maybe this song could have been written like longer ago and then they just mm-hmm. kind of like revamped it for this album. Or like AFI before AFI got all sad and emo. Did, well, didn't they, they used to be like a band. hardcore band? Yeah, they were like, well, they were like, uh, like a punk band. Like, oh, okay. like so they were like hardcore punk. punk, but they were like punk. Uh, one thing I noticed about the song, too, uh, is like this is the first of a small handful of songs that actually changes up the singers. Uh, mm-hmm. So like Tom being the lead singer and Theo being the backup and Theo does take over a handful of tracks on this album. Uh, it yeah. was kind of nice. It gives the album a little more variety. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but it doesn't feel so good moving forward in certain tracks. Some better than others, but other ones I'm just kind of mm-hmm. like, eh, because you can definitely tell who took the lead in the songs and with the way they're written, it's just kind of like, oh boy, okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here. But we'll talk about that when it comes in. Interesting take. Um, I don't have much else for this one. It's only two and a half minutes, but this song feels longer than two and a half minutes, but that's not a bad thing because there are some tracks on here that I'm like, okay, even at like two and a half, three minutes, I'm like, this feels like it's dragging. This is taking forever. But this one, it just, it feels like a fully fleshed out song crammed into two and a half minutes. And I'm totally fine with that. I appreciate it. I like it. Um, I really like the vocal harmonizing here and there. That's pretty nice I too. Like the, I don't, ooh, yeah. That happens every once in a while. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, kind of gives me some sort of weird doo wop feel. I don't know. I like it. Um, now, my danceable score for this one is a six out of 10. Because I felt stupid in my kitchen trying to determine this score. So let's just move on. 
<laughs> you felt stupid trying to determine it. Like, were you dancing? You're like seven, six. Like you're just doing some weird, like weird, like. <laughs> um. Okay. So laptop on the stove, typing, dancing to it, and then looking behind me, going, "There's other people in this room." And then I was like, six out of ten. And then I moved on to the next one. <laughs> oh, it was shame that dropped. It the was score. shame. It was shame. I think it would have been a six point five if they hadn't been. Here. This is the kind of song that I could see a circle pit doing too. So not even necessarily like <laughs> really? to, to those of you who don't know, like mosh pits or when everyone collides, but circle pits are when people like essentially just running. Yeah. You know, Skipping around in a big ass circle, pushing each other. Yeah, I could see the song doing a circle pit. I could absolutely see that. Interesting. I've been in a couple of those in my life. Oh, it's that's exhausting. scary. <laughs> I I could not keep up with anybody. I've accidentally gotten into the mosh pit just by being on the outside, just sort of falling into it. Have like when it grows, uh, but circle pits. I think maybe I I kind of did like the the roundabout where you pull in and then you're like nope don't like this. And then I That's the best part. Right you can away. go in and out whenever you want. Like right? those mosh pits, like you have to fight to get to back to the crowd. Yeah, like circle pits. You're just it's literally just doing this, and whenever you're done, it's like a roundabout. Whatever you want to, and then you just want to get off on. Yeah, literally pull off onto that street. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun. It's not. It's only exhausting because you're moving way too fucking much but again i was like i think the last time i was in one was like 19 so oh, i had the energy for it at the very least much more limber yeah i at the very least <laughs> but yeah short and sweet song two and a half minutes uh it's just another super fun strong song to keep the uh album moving along so so far so good again yes good stuff all right song number four everyone pushed down this sounds like the fuck you mom and dad song that I was waiting for. Just the vibe I get from it. Um, it is similar to the songs prior. Um, it's really hard to diversify when you really have like a sound. Because if you're pop punk and you have something that's very, you know, uh, intricate and melodic, people can be like, you sold out. You're not pop punk. So it's like you, you kind of have too to. Foggy for your britches. Right? <laughs> and it's like you kind of have to stick within your lane whether it's you know you just kind of got to do that so i understand why a lot of these songs sound similar especially in the genre but uh it kind of sucks sometimes um but speaking of harmonizing and vocalizations there are some ba ba ba's don't remember how it actually goes uh but it adds it adds like an airiness to the song that i like I'll, I'll kind of like piggyback right off that comment because I have two comments about it. First off, I say I do like the vocal harmonies all across the track. I think yeah. great, especially on the hook, though, because like they kind of get a little playful with that. I really like it. It's just a minor piece of the song, but it adds like a lot of flavor to it. So it's some, definitely something to appreciate. And then, yeah, the ba 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 da ba ba part is that I, I think that's really fun. I really enjoy it. It's a great sing along moment. Super feel yeah. good. I can just imagine jumping around in a crowd a little bit and just doing that along with them. And so it'd be, it'd be really fun. I, I like the guitar riff through the verse. It's not bad. It just feels a little flat. Like it just, it doesn't feel like it has, uh, I don't know, audible substance to it. Uh, I give this a four out of 10 dance ball, minimal head banging at most. I thought this song was more energetic than that. I'd, I'd give it upwards of a six or seven. Um, It's less energy and more can I consistently dance to this on beat or is it all over the place where it's like you'll get your eighth note and eighth notes and then it's like halftime, the quarter notes, but then it speeds up to 60. I'm like, I can't fucking dance to this, but I can just sit there and headbang and that'll be fine. You can dance to 16th, just break it down to eights or quarters. It's super easy. Like um, when, if you hear like blast beats in a concert, you could still just find the quarter note or eighth note, just bob your head. You don't have to go 32nd note like okay. Okay. <laughs> one. We're talking about dancing, not math. Two, the four out of ten danceable score tells me different. Three, that's my score. Shut the fuck up. Doesn't mean I'm not going to argue with it. Well, I will. That's kind of what the show's for. I have to disagree with you at every turn. We can always argue about shit. Maybe four episodes from now, I'm going to bring this one specific uh, point up, and you'll be like, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't say that. I just gaslight you into, like, the <laughs> I gaslight you into oblivion, just like you're 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 insane. You're actually insane. Then I take down the YouTube video, and I put it back up it like out. altered. It's like sorry, yeah. there's technical issues with that one. Right? Anyways, here's the redux. <laughs> and then I go to it. I'm like, see, it's right. 
No, you're right. And then it's this whole, it's it's like some whole, like a, a mental, tru- it's like this mental Truman show though, where everyone in my life is setting me up and just lying about uh, reality. Um, I would love if this was the show that you had to find that out on. <laughs> Rate the Record is your Truman show. I love this. I'm the actor where it's like, the dude on the moon is telling me shit like Savannah's catching on. So then I could be like Truman walking with a six pack or whatever. Fucking, I don't, oh. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, but there's some things about it that make me laugh that aren't supposed to be funny. Oh my God. Just the dude panicking, kicking his way into the house and then just opening the basement. Come on, buddy, wake up. I got a six pack. He's like fucking tearing apart the basement. I'm just like, God, this is dumb. I like it. Oh God. All right. Anyways, we can roll right along to song number five, Pinto. What is that chorus? There are three lines and two of them are the same. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I uh, don't really remember at this point. Okay. Well, there you go. That definitely tells me a lot. Uh, I don't know if it's the lyrics themselves, the syllable phrasing, but this one sounds a little more juvenile. Which is fine because if you want to hear juvenile goth, literally just take uh, goth gob, uh, literally take a step back to the previous album. I mean, like they mm. were like they were way more punk, and yeah. like actually, you know what? Oh god, I should have said this in the beginning because I, I, I need help here to the Gob fans who are listening to this. Uh, speaking of juvenile Gob music, so they have a split album with uh, the, the not the McCoys, uh, the McCaffrins, I think they were called, like another kind of like local punk band. There's a song on that album I heard way, way, way back in the year, like 2002 on like Yahoo radio called the PP dance. Uh, and I used to think okay. it was so great, super energetic, fun and hilarious, especially because I was only like, what, 13 at the time. Um, it doesn't exist anywhere. And when I say anywhere, I, I mean, I've spent more time than I'm willing to admit over the course of five years looking for that song. Really? And like, it doesn't exist. I can't find the lyrics anywhere. It's referenced like discographies. It's like, Oh yeah, it's on this split album with the McCachrins. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but there's no link to it. It's not on YouTube. It's not on Spotify. It's not on last yeah. FM. It's not on SoundCloud. Uh, and apparently copies of it on CD or sell for way too fucking much. So I'm not willing to spend money on it. Yeah. Does anyone have it and be willing to share it with me, please. You'll be rewarded greatly. I don't know with what, but I'll find something. Okay. I'll find something. I goddamn want the pee pee dance. Um, I can see how a band being called gob, uh, just my two minute searching while you were talking about that. It's really hard to find anything unless you add a bunch of qualifiers like band, music, Canada. Holy shit. Yeah, just get the it's definition of the out word there. gob. <laughs> it's probably out there, but it's like hidden so deep. There, there are websites I'm not willing to click on that might have a link to it. But oh. I'll tell, that's the thing, though. Like these are some pretty shady, like not even any Angel Fire or like Tripod Lycos websites <laughs> from like the year 2000. Like I yeah. can't find it and it it's frustrating like huh. i know when i hear it again i'm not even it's gonna be like oh i'm glad i heard that but i'm not like super stoked you know yeah but, like i i have to i just it's like that itch you have to fulfill it's i i need that one last hit you know just just do it interesting all right well i feel i like uh i like treasure hunts so I will. If you try found it before this. me, I'd be frustrated. There's, there's there's someone out there with like a rough copy of the CD because they were at a gob show in '97 or something like that. It's got to yeah. exist. Mm, I like this. Gives me something to keep an eye out for. Oh, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. Thank uh, you. But yeah, with uh, Pinto, as I said, I don't, it's funny how I mentioned that the the chorus itself isn't um, super memorable or anything like that because like I obviously don't really remember what it sounds like at this point. Although if I heard, it, I'd be like, oh yeah, that one. But yeah. one of my notes is, it's literally my last note, it just says short, energetic, decent, but this one gave me nothing uh, all that new to grab onto. That's, so that's probably why I'm not remembering it too much. Yeah. Uh, but again, the energy was there in this one at the very least, so that's nice. But it's it, it's not as exciting as like previous tracks. Uh, so that's maybe why it's not sticking to me so much. I don't know. Because again, mm-hmm. like the whole familiarity of other songs is starting to kick in by now. Uh, every song title I'm looking at right now is replaced with I Hear You Calling, so I definitely understand that. Um, for this one, I only have a couple other ones. Uh, 
positive, solid drum fill after the bridge. Really like that. I really like the surprises that the drums kind of offer uh, pretty much this whole album. There are certain songs they don't really shine, other ones. I really like the drum rolls and the the little drum whatever sequences, rough, rish, the riff, roughs, whatever, who cares? Uh, they fit a lot in the two and a half minutes with the song, and it is 90% danceable for 89% of the song. Oh, okay, so is that like a perfect 10 out of 10 then? I don't know. I told you it's not math. Yeah, but 90... You can't do 90% that. You can have 90% dance- of an 89% thing or whatever the hell you said. Yes, it's 90% danceable for 89% of the song. Oh, Because there's part of it. There's part of it that's a little slower. So don't really want to dance during that. God damn it. Now I'm going to get all like weird about it. want to solve that math thing. Even though I'm terrible <laughs> at it, but... I'm bad at math, but I like trying to figure it out anyways. And then like, yeah. I'm always off by like X amount. I'm like, well, at least I tried. <laughs> I I am bad at math unless I literally have the formula right next to me. And even then I don't understand what it is I'm doing. So hey, remember middle school when they told us that, oh, you're not going to have a calculator <laughs> all the time. It's like, bitches didn't even know about our smartphones. Right? Oh my God. You guys are so stupid. Now, now, every now job. You're, uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now your uh, your school districts are handing out iPads. Who's the real chump now? Yeah, exactly. You we used to like computer class, but now they just have iPads all the time. Right? They don't get to sit there and play Mavis Beacon typing. They don't get to play uh, Mixie's Math House or whatever. Math uh, Circus. Okay. Uh, Sammy's Circus, whatever. No science, whatever. Sammy Science yeah. House. God, I, I don't I remember, remember. Millie. Mathville one two three. I remember Mathville one two three. Yeah, uh, did you ever play Midnight Rescue or uh, Treasure Mountain? Those ones were my favorite. I don't recall. No. Uh, yeah, just Google I it. I played just... some weird Mother Goose game that was like a kind of like a side scroller, weird like old pixely graphics type thing. It's yeah. strange. That was like back in the mid to late nineties. Nice. I love that stuff. I love watching people play it now. It's nostalgia. And I'm like, I'm watching an adult play a game for a child. (laughs) It's weird. Sometimes, depending on how it is, it's either just good for nostalgia or good for a laugh. That that is true. Or good to learn math. (laughs) Have we run out of things to talk about with God? Because, I mean, we've gone way off on a I think so. And we have like six or seven songs left. But we have so many notes to go. And I got actually have things to say. I actually have one more for Pinto, too. I didn't even finish. You you had mentioned like the the drum fills and everything like that after the bridge. But during the bridge, like in the middle of the track, the bass and the tom, tom drum work. Uh, super cool. I really like that. Like anyone who's been here on the show before knows that I'm, I'm a whore for the tom drums when they're like used properly and yeah. like building atmosphere and everything. That's super cool. So I love it here. It's a small part, but like at least it's something new and interesting to go on and a song that sounds so familiar to the others. Yes. So I appreciated that. I like that overall again, though, just nothing really to grab onto in this. I understand that. My, my, uh, my same words are coming up quickly. Uh, just before we move on, I'm having my own Mandela moment. Did you ever have your eyebrow pierced? No. Why do I remember you with your eyebrow pierced? I don't know. I always wanted to, but no. I, just feel like I had I my lip pierced. I had my lip pierced, but that's it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know that. But it's like I don't know for some reason I remember with an eyebrow. Like I'm having a Mandela moment here. I swear to God, nice. others. I used the other Savannah used to be on this show. You know, the one with the actual relevant music opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, the one that was just a complete mirror. Oh my image. God! You know what it was. When you got your fucking haircut, that Savannah is gone. I knew I should have kept some hair and cloned myself. That was the dimensional flip. There's another one running around being successful, having more money. She's in your dimension now, and she's doing that stuff. Yeah, but she's doing all this stuff. She's probably taller, (laughs) longer hair. She's six five and her foot is uh, her hair is three foot. (laughs) (laughs) I want to be her. Well, you got to do another dimensional flip, but I don't know how you did it in the first place. All right. Tape hair to my head. You're looking for that, Savannah. We're looking for California. Song number six, <laughs> looking for California. Uh, okay, so this one took a couple different listens, uh, different times for me to actually kind of appreciate it. Because I, ca- I felt a little fatigued coming off the last one, where it's like, okay, a lot of these songs are starting to sound the same. But this one caught my attention, I think maybe the third listen, because the first couple, you know, is very passive, kind of get familiar with the album. And then the third and fourth listen for me are re- when I really start to pay attention to it. 
And I don't think I've actually really heard a three minute song being split into two discernible sections. Like, sure, I've heard like 10 minute songs that are split or seven minute even, but to do that and not have it feel weird or clunky, I actually really like that. With the ending, actually, um, I I felt it was like a little anticlimactic. Oh, um, yeah. Although I didn't really know what to expect out of it, but at the same yeah. time, it just, I don't know, it felt a little different. I do like how it like slows down to eventually fade out, but it, it didn't feel like the right step to end the song. But I mean, this is, I'm not going to wear my producer hat and tell you how to end the song because, I don't know, I would just say, do an abrupt stop, just fuck people up. But I mean this fucks people up in their own its own way right i mean it's, it yeah. just completely changes the mood of the song so why not um but just like no regrets the this one has that like late 90s pop punk vibe de- definitely going strong here so once again really appreciating that kind of sound I, I dig it especially because i think before like i listened to this album like three or four times coming into this review probably three times i think and before i did one of the song the last songs i had listened to before starting my listen of this album was uh damn it by blink 182 okay so it just has that once again like uh kind of like fast like pop punk style to it and everything like that so yeah i had that in mind i was like in the mood for it so when i hear a song like this it actually like you know enhances my experience a little bit but i didn't i wasn't biased about it i didn't let it affect the score the score is as it is um but yeah other than that like uh no real lyrical analysis on this album although it has some like it has some darker messagery all around uh, I think the last song is about sex, uh, but like this one is just I, this song. This is just a song about civility and everything like that, and just like trying to find common ground with people. And God damn, is yeah. that relevant in this day and age? So uh, I appreciate the message behind it. I had to delete X off my phone because of stuff like that. It's just like anyone. Oh, you that mean I... that the app? I was just like, I thought you were like like anonymizing. Oh, something. oh, oh, Twit, Twitter, a. <laughs> Uh, what FKA Twitter? The app um, formerly known as Prince. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's like you you try to enjoy something and you're like, hey, everybody, look at the thing I enjoy, and everyone's like, you're a fucking idiot, and you're just like, okay, I'm just gonna go back with my thing now. Thank you. It's like, man, there is no civility. So, didn't you listen to God? You guys are stupid. Um, I so you next like once or twice a week and look at it for like a minute. Yeah, and I'm just like, I don't like this place. <laughs> Well, I know that this isn't the proper uh, venue for me to vent, but I just want to say this one sentence. Uh, the online wrestling community is fucking stupid, and I hate all of you. It always you. has been. You are terrible, I used to, I used and you're ruining of the enjoyment of everything for everyone. I, I was never one of the toxic people, but I was. I used to be in the wrestling community, so yes, I've seen them. Holy shit. Like, leave better. your house, man. Touch Anyways. Ass, asshole. Right? Fucking stupid. Um, Anyways. Yeah, right. So looking for California. Okay, so uh, you were talking uh, about you liking the sound of this song. I mentioned that I'm loving the one guitar pedal garage band tone because there are, there are certain guitar tones that I'm hearing here that it literally just sounds like clean or overdrive and that's it. And you know what? That's totally fine because it matches the song. Cool with it. Uh, I really like the riffs during the second half that sort of cool down instrumental second half uh kind of makes me feel like you're walking into the sunset so it kind of has that little slow burn the Californian at the end. sunset yeah West Coast, baby. exactly exactly bright orange um my last note for this just a danceable score is three out of ten because i actually just want to listen to it and not fuck around um i actually just like it it kind of gives you a little come down uh nothing you really want to bop your hips to so uh, low score is not bad for this one, uh, but it's accurate. Fair enough. I get that. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 funny because like um, around the middle of the album, a lot of the scores became the same. It was like differentiating like by 0. 0.5. Yeah. Um, there are songs kind of like this one within that range, kind of a spoiler, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but just like it was so hard to know where to put it because when you, when you have several songs that are like, for example, if you have like a bunch of tens, for example, like how do you know which one goes first if you love them that yeah. much, right? But like even if you're at things something like like you know eight point five, seven point five, something like that, it's like because I, I I like this song, but then yeah, it's just it's like I feel like it should be higher on my list, which we'll find out later. But like. I don't know. It's one of those weird things where it's going to appear a little lower because everything's the same. Like the scores are the same. 
You just have a bunch of fives. He had to organize them all. Yeah, imagine I hate the album that much. Oh my god. That would be terrible. Uh, okay, song number seven. Moving on now to Sleepyhead. We're on the uh, second half of the album now. So is this their version of Adam's song? Uh, I, I mean, I guess. Oh wait, it's like when did Adam's song I come out? Nineteen ninety nine. Oh, did it? Yeah. Does that take off your pants and jacket? I don't know. Probably. I don't I, listen I to Blink. So uh, I just I know those two albums, Adam and the Satan, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket were like the, the two huge ones. And I know that song came off one of those albums. Uh the former. Uh Adam of the State. Oh, okay. That's also like what's my age again and everything like that. Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I guess a decent comparison. Uh because yeah, Adam's song is still like still has life to it and everything like that, although it's like more serious subject matter. I probably should have broke down Sleepyhead and like kind of looked into the lyrics a little bit yeah uh unfortunately i didn't but it feels like it touches on something a little more serious at the very least yeah uh my second note after asking you that question is so far yes it is um i feel oddly melancholic listening to this like i was just dumped um definitely more emotional than the punky stuff i thought i was going to hear more of and I really like the uh, drum work at the beginning. The uh, deep tone was very nice. Oh yeah, like more of the uh, the tom drum stuff and everything. Yeah, like that. yeah. Another. Yeah, good I'm use starting of to that. see what you're what you're on to because every time I mention it, you're like, "That's the tom drums." I'm like, "Okay, okay, might well, be onto something." Usually, now. you get your like you're just your your kick snare and your cymbals and everything like that. But like, I mean, the toms coming in for like a lot of fills. But when you can actually incorporate it as being part of like yeah. the verse or the chorus. Like that's when it really sticks out to me where I'm just like, okay, damn, like you're you're using like your actual drum set, not just like those three pieces, you know? Yeah. You're not doing like the Meg White thing where you only have like a three piece kit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I do like the slower pace of this this track too, as compared to some of the others that we've been getting so far. Yeah. Uh that and the energy like isn't super high on this one, but again, it's it's still there. Uh, but this one's just like a little different. Uh, this I feel like this possibly could have come later in the album too, but yeah, part of me is glad it didn't, because just in case it might like I might get too fatigued and I hear something like this, I'm just like okay, whatever. So I don't know, maybe this was the appropriate spot for it. Uh, I really dig how catchy this one is as well. I I think it is. The chorus is super easy to sing. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the higher end guitar that like sits in like the left speaker too, as you're like listening to the chorus and everything like that. Nice little touch made me appreciate the song more. Uh, and without spoiling too much, I already appreciate the song a lot as it is. Well, there's Chris's number one. Um, for me, my my danceable score uh, is two out of ten because this song makes me feel sad. Yeah, I'm just I got I, I really wish I broke down the lyrics because I mean like they're I don't want to say they're straightforward, but you can probably get a gist of what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna try to break it down without reading the lyrics right now, so that's fine. I'll just move on. Uh, the final course ran on for quite a bit, I will say, but I do at least like how there's like little changes, like little by little with each passing cycle of it. So at least it wasn't the same thing over and over again. Yeah. It's still stretched a bit. And there are some points in this album where that happens again. Um, but I didn't, I didn't mind it too much. I do, I do really like this one and I'll hold it to you to see if this one is my number one. So you're talking about the breaking down the lyrics. So as you were speaking i brought up the lyrics and i i'm very bad at interpreting them unless they're like laid out obviously you know yeah, yeah. um but this one just certain words in here it feels heavy well he says the word suicidal a few times says the well apparently says the word incest um yeah suicidal uh painted murder on the wall footsteps coming down the hall yeah seems heavy don't like it i'm out who knows? Maybe I'll look into it once we're uh, done here. At the very least, too li too little, too late. But whatever. I mean, right? I'm still curious now. I've I've liked this song for a long time too, so I'm surprised I don't yeah. know more about its meaning. Yeah, ignorance is bliss sometimes. Sometimes I like the darker meaning. I like knowing what you're getting into. Like especially, like you can write a song about poop, piss, and shit all the time. I want to know what the pee pee dance. Like I I, I miss that song, <laughs> but yet I'm I, like th this is the one that'll interest me more because like it's a deeper yeah. subject matter. So like. Who knows? Maybe it's true. personal. Maybe it's just a story. Who knows? Yeah, I guess that's true. You look for something more. Exactly. I mean, that's why I dig a lot of Ellie Smith lyrics, despite how fucking sad they are. 
Yeah, you know, I always forget that. And then as soon as you bring that up, I'm like, why was I ever questioning you? Yes, you are correct. You still have to listen to Memory Lane. Yeah, one day. Song number eight, X Shuffle. Okay, so uh, clearly the lyric, or not the lyrics, the vocals or someone else. Uh, now, what instrument does he play? Because I thought it was the bass player, but, or is he just the second singer? Theo. Oh, Theo, he is the, like the rhythm anything? guitarist. Oh, okay. Uh, I assumed he was the bass player, but whatever. I don't like his vocals. Uh, not a fan. Um, it see, it feels like someone is trying their hardest, but they just can't get the syllables to fit right. See, I, I feel like he did a better job in No Regrets. Yes. Like that. That I didn't even a... notice that was him there. So yes, he did a better job. Um, I believe it's 100%. No Regrets. X Shuffle. That's the way. And can I resist? Are the Theo songs? You're reading your notes. You're like, oh yeah, I see. That. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> um, uh, what what was that first one that you said? No regrets. That was the only one that I didn't notice. It was him. The other three I made note. Uh, but this one, yeah, or the other one, didn't notice. This one I definitely do. Didn't like it. Well, then you now you know all of them. The 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 code has been cracked. Right. The intro to this one, it had promise to it at the very least, but other than that, like, I'm not very big on this track at all. Mm -hmm. um, the rhyme scheme in the chorus makes it kind of catchy, but, like, the music as a whole isn't all that memorable. Mm -hmm. So, like, just once again, another situation where I have nothing to really grab onto. Uh, the guitars swapping, like, the left and right sides in the bridge was at least very cool. I, yeah. I, I do like that they did something a little different with that. Uh, and again, this one's short, two minutes, 41 seconds. Uh, it honestly served served it so much better being that shorter because any longer yeah. would have just been dragging and like there would have been nothing else to add to the song except like three more courses. Yeah, and you know that they would have just been the song title over and over and over again. Um, kind of like an upcoming song, actually, that I make a note about that for. Two of them. Oh, yeah. um, the guitar riff and tone give me... Or, they give me hopes that went unfulfilled is kind of what I'm getting from this. Uh, it's a little bit more drunk basement punk show. And uh, admittedly, I hated this song the first couple of times. It isn't bad. Uh, not my favorite, clearly. And it is three out of ten on the dance front. Moderate head nodding is suitable. Well, it got you moving in, in some way, shape or form. So it has yeah. that going for it. Yeah, it is just as much exercise as a shake weight. Interesting imagery there. Okay, so we'll move on to the song number nine. That's the way yeah. you, shake, you shake the weight. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like <laughs> it. And I made it worse. <laughs> yes, um, yes, you did. <laughs> uh, this is the kind of lyricism that makes me cringe. I would totally turn this down in the car. Uh, simple song, but like, what else am I supposed to expect? Um, oh, and then I have some, uh, I have some production notes after this. Oh, you have production notes. I do oh, for this one. Hat. Right. Exactly. I'll give you my, uh, rush hat that's on cheese face back here. Oh my, oh my God. I have to put the, the, put the cheese, the cheese mask on while trying to describe a serious thing. And you have to put on the rush hat though. That's the producer hat. That's the official producer hat. Of course. I don't wear it. <laughs> but I, 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 I hypothetically wear it while I'm uh, making my own music. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, at the very least, I thought that the instrumentation in this one and like the melody and everything like that was definitely more fun and energetic than the previous one. But yeah, still, still not super fantastic. Uh, the course is really catchy. So that enhances the experience overall, I guess. Uh, and again, uh, yet another short track, it's only two minutes and 45 seconds this time around, uh, which again does a lot of favors considering that, like, you can't stretch mm -hmm. something like this one out. Like, it just wouldn't work. Nothing super memorable overall, but it was decent enough. Like, I didn't hate it. Again, it's not my least favorite on the entire thing, but this is, I mean, you're getting the side B syndrome at this point. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I like the music itself. No qualms, no complaints, but I do not like the vocals. Rewrite it now. Bridge is fun. Keep that. Drums need more body, and I do not want to dance. No dancing to That's the Way, huh? No, fuck that. That's the way. Dun, 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 dun. That's the way. See, I'm doing it. 
I feel like after um, moderate head nodding, I got a little bit of vertigo, so I just had to sit this one out. Got a little dizzy, had to drink a juice box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> eat half an apple. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I eat the whole damn thing. Don't let it rot. Don't let it I used to eat, I used to eat the core, and then I realized how like how close I was to choking so many times. Wait, you you would only eat the core? No, no, no. I, I used to eat the core because oh. I used to do a lot of like walking to and from work. So I would eat an apple on my way to work. But instead of chucking the core, I would just eat the whole core, spit out the seeds, spit out like the top and the bum. And then uh, then that's it. So I could just throw it into the road and it wouldn't matter. I was going to say careful. Those apple seeds have like uh, traces of cyanide in them. Yeah, uh, right. Although, granted, I'm pretty sure if you eat the seeds from an apple, you're not going to get sick. You probably need a lot of apple seeds to get sick. <laughs> My God. Well, I if I ate them, I would make sure that I bit them first just for slow release, kind of like Tylenol. Also, if I'm doing that on my way to work, I feel like I'm doing it for a reason. So, <laughs> Then again, like you just said you got a new job. So, I mean, like yeah. if, you hate, if you hate yourself so much already at this job that you're already thinking about biting into the apple cyanide pill. <laughs> no, I haven't started yet. I start next week. So we shall see. Oh, you're, already, rosy. But you're already talking about cyanide pills. You're already on the up track right here. <laughs> moving on you haven't missed a day of employment have you oh so many when's the last time you have a job i don't know it's been so long ha oh <laughs> song my, number oh 10 my oh my so god long. i don't like how that works ah oh um, my they've actually all worked so far it's good so my <laughs> you're you're you took a, a little bit of time off just so you could write down some really good ones i bet you have like an album seven weeks from now and you have all of your introductory puns for the song titles i wish and you just sit there and you're like oh, i'm gonna get her and then like someone comes to your door and says, chris are you sure you're not gonna go to bed you're like no i got stuff to do and you're ready your chicken your nuggies already leave them at the door <laughs> And then I forget they're there. And then I uh, piss into a Pepsi bottle because I don't get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, c'est la vie. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm going to change my diaper. <laughs> picture is vivid as fuck. Oh, man. If only you live life as luxurious as mine. <laughs> Holy shit, everything's everything is within arm's reach. This is fantastic. I don't even have to get out of this chair. My ass might hurt, but you know what? It's fine. I just reposition myself like this. We're good to go. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Song number 10 <laughs> been so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know that we had uh, mentioned and alluded to it earlier in the show, but uh I can tell these songs apart, but are they really any different, to be quite honest? Um, I don't really mind the verse. Uh, I hate the vocal layering. Oh, this is just me being like super picky, like whatever. Um, but I hate the vocal layering because it's just a doubling of the verse lines. It doesn't really add much. It's just like an echo sort of thing. Um, that was whatever that didn't add much. Um, <laughs> It has been so long. Okay, but I mean that being the entire chorus makes this sound so goddamn long. Exactly. It's been so long since I've heard another <laughs> song pop up. Jesus right? Christ. Holy Only three shit. minutes and 13 seconds, too. It yeah, feels so much longer. This is one where I mentioned, yeah, like the hook is like kind of over repeated in the second half of the track. Oh. It's like all you hear towards the end and everything like that right? for a long time. Uh, I mean, as catchy as it is, it just doesn't hold up as well as the other courses and hooks, especially being repeated so often. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't super duper hot on that one. Uh, I do like the pickup and pacing in the song at the very least, uh, especially at this point, because the last few tracks definitely had a bit of a slowdown as compared to this one. Yeah. So at least some of the energy came back. That's what I liked it for. And I mean, that was kind of my only two notes is three minutes and 13 seconds. And I mean, again, feeling a bit like other tracks. So it's one of those situations where you're like wow what do i even say anymore yeah yeah i'm, I'm um, like one note away from writing more hedgehog facts <laughs> i do <laughs> i i do have a bunch for this uh, i got some production notes um i have some comparisons so i'm just going to run through mine if you don't have any more um the repetition is killing any desire i have to even care about the music so sorry 
Um, this song, this song was done by the group member that did their work the night before it was due, but still expected to share the final grade equally. You, you literally just came up with the song title. You don't get 50% of the mark. Um, so there are 14 tracks on this album. And even if you were so superstitious that you didn't want to cut this song for a 13 track album, I could definitely find you one or two more that you could cut to bring it down to like 12 or 11. But nonetheless, I can dance to this and did nine out of 10. Wow, at the very least you danced. <laughs> right? It's like, I hate this, but it's prolonging the dancing, so this is fun. Um, excuse me, Mr. Gob, if you're listening to this review by now, Mr. Gob, I'm looking at you. Uh, I have a suggestion, what you could do in uh, the anniversary release of this album, whenever that is, 25, 30 years, whatever you want to do. Take out this song, right? <laughs> Or, I mean, it's not even at the bottom of my list, but still, take out this song and replace yes. it with the pee-pee dance. Please replace <laughs> it with the pee-pee dance. Oh, my God, do it. It can still be a 14-song album. No one will know the difference except me. I'll love you for it. I'll S-tier this album if you do that. Like, literally negate my entire score, redux it to S-tier if you put the pee-pee dance on this album as, like, a canonical track. No second album bonus track. So no digital-only <laughs> download. Canonically on this album, the pee-pee dance. I didn't think that's where that was going, so thank you for that. But as soon as you said, like, it could be, like, taken off or add another mm. song or whatever, like, I was just like, well, I know it could replace it. Yeah, <laughs> right? Well, then there you go. Although, there you fucking go. Uh, song number 14, not 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 14 on this track list, but 14 on my ranking list. That's yeah. the one I would personally replace, which we'll get to that when we get there. Yeah, me too. For song, right now, we're going to song number 11, 144. They really front-loaded this album, didn't they? Uh, second, ID syndrome. second note, more cringy lyrics. Uh, even Silverchair had better sounding lyrics and they were like 15. And then my next note just says, I'd cut this. <laughs> I'd cut this song. Actually, it's funny I, that you mentioned that because... I feel like now at this point, um, and I do want to just sort of slip this in. Uh, fairly recently, we finally, well, finally, uh, we hit 200 subscribers on YouTube. Literally so as thank, of today of recording this. Yes. Yeah. So thank you. But I feel like that's kind of giving me this inflated ego that now I can just walk in and be like, this production sucks. Take that guitar out much more righteously than I, I had been doing in the past. So I, I feel, I feel like my ego is inflated, uh, 2.6%. That's This is where you get in your car, you drive all the way to Mississauga, you kick down the doors of Metalworks, and you fucking go in there while someone's recording and tell them that all. their shit sucks. You, don't, you haven't even heard the rough demos yet. You're just like, yeah. someone's kind of like tuning their guitar, and you're like, that's trash. I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> or, or I bring the whole gob CD in. I play it for them. I say, can you play this? And they say, what is that? Isn't that already a CD? I say, yes, it is. Can you play this? He says, yes, I can. But isn't that copyright infringement? And then I say, you're fired. I feel like that's how every single uh, every single uh, musician vet is going to go. And then like one of the producers sits there and looks at you, he's like, we need the master tracks if you want to edit anything <laughs> off this. And smash cut to you shoving his head into a toilet and giving him a swirly. That's why I'm trying to get other people to recreate the songs on the album. Give me your students who are eager for exposure. <laughs> right, exactly. Trust me, they'll they'll help me. Do you kids like Gob? Who's that? Great, let's get started. <laughs> there's, no, there's no time for questions. I hope Mr. Gob doesn't hate us for making fun of his band. <laughs> I bought a gob shirt uh from a uh, network records website. So whatever that is worth, uh you're welcome. I I would have liked it back then. I actually owned this on CD. I if it's not in the storage then it's gone forever, but I no. do ha have had a copy of this in my life at the very least. Nice. I have not. I should have said that at the very <laughs> beginning, not 11 songs in. <laughs> Oh, I love when I have typos because sometimes typos are just like the perfect thing to read because with the typo, it says song starts uh, pretty strong with some goof heavy guitars. I think nice. I meant to say good. Nice. No, nice. the F and the D yeah. are right there on the keyboard. <laughs> yep. No, there's there no goofy guitars in this one. I like the good heavy guitars in this one. So I was definitely more interested by it at the very least. Uh, I liked it. I thought the verses were cool too. Uh, I love the the work and like the emphasis on the bass and once again the tom drums on this. You put yeah. it in the verse, you implemented it well. It sounds nice. Of course, it's going to catch my attention. 
it gives it like the song a much different atmosphere too. Well, no, I don't want to say much different, but a different atmosphere. And I can definitely get behind it. So this one uh, being on side B feels good so far as compared to some of the other things I've already heard. Good. Um, I don't like that much or well, as much as it feels like you might. Um, this song sounds like it could be on MXPX's 2003 album, uh, but it's like maybe 78% there. Uh, maybe if they let this stew for three years, it would have been better. Uh, not danceable, at least not in a way that makes sense. Dancing doesn't have to make sense. It's very, you can do interpretive dancing, you know. It's like, like, the like you dancing. as in like, like the royal you or like me, because no, I cannot. Yes, you can. Just moving around spastically can be interpretive dancing. No, that's a seizure. That's interpretive dancing. That that's called that's so called the emergency. They... <laughs> so say, like, why did I end up in the hospital then? It's just very like sploinky music at that point, where like the music's way too fast and like like a lot of pizzicato violins going. You're sitting like, like. So am I having a seizure or am I getting electrocuted? Uh, depends on what your seizure looks like. I don't know. A lot of people have different seizures. Some are more violent than others. Ah, fair. I can say I've never seen my own seizure. Um, but yeah, Never that's mind. all I that's all I got. Excuse me. Uh, I only have one other lyric. Uh, one other note has to do with the lyrics, is what I want to say. Because you, you, I think you mentioned something about like cheesy lyrics or something like this in this one, or corny or whatever. Uh, I said cringy. I said cringy, even okay. Silver Chair had better sounding lyrics, and they were fifteen. Uh, I think that's I, all I said. Yeah, a single line towards in the song where I, it was a kind of a head scratcher. I want to be with you, and we'll be together. Man, redundancy sure is redundant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's like they had to fit something in. Okay, and you know how many words are in the English language that they could have used but didn't? Yeah, but they chose been so long, been so long, been so long, but don't put a lot of faith in this. It's one thing to have a hook like that, but this isn't a it's hook. This is like hook. literally just a line. And like, that you could have was me. I want to no. be with you and we'll be together. It's like, well, yeah. If you're gonna, if you want to be with them, that indicates that you'll be together. You don't have to say the second part. Some of these hooks are razor sharp, and they're actually hooks. Some of these hooks are made out of pool noodles. They're not really hooks. They're some just them, something that you might remember. Maybe. Some of them you'll float on in the pool, yes, and then other ones you'll uh, have uh, put to the skin of your back. You'll hang from the ceiling while listening to typo negative. <laughs> you should do them. I really like them a lot. Not really giving anything away, but I think you actually had that one point on the schedule yeah. and took them off. Yeah, yeah. I um I wanted to do one of their early albums, and then I actually want to just do the one that I really like. Um, but some of the songs on there, I'm like, I like these a lot, and I don't want to hear anybody shit talk them. So I took them off, and I was like, I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for this. So hey, you you, you got to do it eventually. Like, how, depending on how long the show goes, you're gonna have to do it eventually. Yeah. Uh well, it's it's on the on the docket i mean i have like four or five maybe six of their albums so i got a lot to choose from yeah well i mean we have a long list of albums so you got to fit it in somewhere if you really want I, to yeah between john mellencamp and bob dylan part two well, let's do bob dylan <laughs> i had to give you something you know Okay, we're getting close to the end. We're almost there. Song number 12, Can I Resist? And it's not even a question. There's no question mark. Just Can I Resist? Yes. I hear Weezer in this one, too. Uh, like keeping the vocals off. Oh, like keeping the vocals off time a little doesn't add a cute charm. It makes it sound so messy because everything else is so polished and shiny. I scored it accordingly. Um, and... I don't have much for this one other than it is definitely starting to feel like the end of the album. I am exhausted. I wish there was a slowdown right about now. Um, and then I think I only have positives after this. I only have positives. So after you. Well, it's good to know. And also this is the uh, last Dio song too on mm. the record. So maybe that'll, uh, that's part of your score as well, because my God, this one sounds like, uh, like, some of his other tracks too, because my note here, another Theo led song, and it sounds almost exactly like his other ones. Uh, yes, I don't like it's, it, like this one kind of reminds me of like That's the Way, for example. So, I mean, like, you know, where my headspace is with this particular song. Mm -hmm. 
I honestly found the vocal melody and structuring kind of annoying in this particular song. Yeah. Uh, the the chorus improves on it a little, but still. Oh my god, it's just got like a lot of air wanting to come up. I'm trying to stop oh. it from doing something too gross live on air. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I I'm not sure how a two and a half minute song, quite literally two minutes and thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. I don't know how this felt so long. It, this one actually really did feel so long. Maybe it's because this feels like a handful of the other songs we've already. Oh my god! Yes. To. Uh, like I don't necessarily feel like the song was super terrible, but I didn't enjoy it too much. The deja vu is strong in this one, so uh, it was a long two and a half minutes. Let's say that much. I do have two two positive notes and my dance score one. I enjoy the chorus melody, but I don't think I would ever remember this song after it stopped playing. Sick guitar solo. I like that, but do wish out it do wish it rang out longer. Be a badass. Don't hold back. No dance, only toe tap. It's in Russia. Dance. In Russia, toe tap dance you. Oh. Those those were a bunch of words, yes. You could have just said toe taps you. You could have just said that. I could have done a lot of things that I choose not to. Yeah, you didn't have to be on this podcast. I was going to bring that up, but I didn't want to fight. Not in front of the children. I, I think one day I'm just going to tell you to bring your, like, let your partner replace you for a single episode. See what happens. Sure. You would have absolutely no idea what to talk about and would probably start talking about an Xbox probably, or bikes. I'll just constantly cut them off and like ask for his opinion on things. Like, Listen, I didn't even listen to the album. I'm just like... Oh my- well, then I just tell him to interpret the song and how he feels about it just by the title alone. That's how you get really interesting about it. What do you, like, what do you think about this song? I don't know. Sounds like it, it probably sounds like rock. Is it because the song is called The Rock? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, like, for example, it's song number 13. How would you, would you even, like, feel about a song called Desktop Breaking? Office Space. I was going to say, considering this is the year 2000, so Desktop probably felt like more of a different meaning than we would know it as now yeah uh definitely office space that whole scene where they're hitting the computers in the field uh a printer in the field yeah that one not be the name of that movie i love it i wasn't i was trying to prove that i've seen something cool but that's not a desktop it's like literally a standalone printer How whatever everything was gray it all looks the same i guess <laughs> Anyways, 13 desktop breaking. Go ahead. Because I only have two notes. Okay, well, I got more than that. Uh, actually, no, you go first, because it looks like I have seven, but I'm not going to pre-read them, so I don't know what they say. Seven. Uh, I have seven for the next song. Jesus. Nice. For the ending of the album. Mine are all just uh, witty quips. Yeah, the, the song's only like like three minutes and two seconds, so you get like another short one on your hands. This is yeah. full of short songs on this album. Except for the, I mean, even te- technically the last song is also short, but we'll discuss that in a moment. Yes. Uh, but first, yeah, at this point, I didn't really have a whole lot to say for this one at all because, like, this really, really just felt like an amalgamation of the other songs. Like, it, yeah. it, it's starting to feel more or less the same. I dig the energy behind it. It doesn't sound bad. It's just a little fatiguing to hear the same type of material over and over and over again. But, like, I'm also trying to give it the benefit of the doubt because I know that you can't really, you know, you're not going to have like a lot of complexity in a, in a pop punk album. Right. And again, these are the type of albums that probably weren't made to sit and listen to front to back, especially in a critical like form, format, like what, what we do. Mm-hmm. Like I, I could probably have this on like this album on while I'm like playing my PlayStation, cleaning, going for a walk, like at a coffee shop, whatever. And like, yeah. I'll be fine with listening to it front to back. I wouldn't even think twice about it, but like, like sitting here one through 14, like writing notes about each song, it gets exhausting. And like, I want people to understand that too. It's like we've critiqued things that we would otherwise like in the past because of the format in which we're listening to this album. Yeah. This isn't a casual listen, unfortunately, or else this album would probably get scored a hell of a lot higher. I'll say that much. Uh, But yeah, so it's a little fatiguing. This is the the point of the album where it really hit home to me. Like this could have been an EP rather than an LP. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I'm still offering to produce this, uh, to remaster it or whatever the fuck you do. Um, just release it. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just going to read all of my notes. Uh, one, two, I don't know, seven, eight. Um, 
How is it that so many of these shorter songs keep feeling much longer? And why do these ones sound like Weezer? I don't really mind this one. It's melodic and you can feel some emotion from it. It's still an uppity song, but it's still but it still feels like a come down of some sort. I do like the group effort while singing the title. What the fuck they mean her body bleeds too much. I mean it does, but what is that? But you didn't but have to is say that, that loud. <laughs> but is that what it means? Um, really repetitive on the song title, just like been too long, too much sometimes. And uh danceable score 7.3 out of 10. Uh sway and drop your body on the downbeat. It's funny because the, the the line that yeah her body bleeds too much. I'm sure there's a deeper meaning behind that. Yeah. It, it's like listening to like only women bleed emotions or something. Yeah, like because it reminds me of only women bleed by Alice Cooper. Mm. Whereas like if you listen to it and just like take it very directly, it can make, sound like it means one thing, but obviously like that song is about like you know someone who's being abused at home type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so like it's, just, it's one of those things that probably has a deeper meaning, but it just sounds like so weird I was gonna you say hear funny it and like, weird on the surface yeah you hear it and you're like yo what what the f-? and then you like i had to go back it's like yeah he, he's very oh. offended by uh the period it's like yeah uh, I, I hate to tell you no matter what woman you meet chances are she's gonna have a period yeah exactly as so long as she's not like 50 plus years old she's probably gonna have a period <laughs> and even then who knows who Body's a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking weird. Can we just move on, please? Have a baby when you're 65. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's weird those guys that are be like 80 and they're dating like 30, 40 year olds and they're having kids at like 70, 80. Who is it that just had one? Al Pacino or some, one of them like Robert De Niro? It, it might have been Al Pacino. Yeah, one of them old guys has like a newborn. How, how did, I didn't, can your dick even work at age 80? Like, no, I always how many wonder, Viagra like, do you need to pop? Is this like like artificial or do they like get it on? Because like I would not want to get it on with someone twice my age. Well, turn off the lights. Oh no, because no, that would be 70, and I'm not doing that. What if they were like a really good looking 70 year old? No. As long as my grandfather is alive, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I, I like older women. I'd, I'd go up, yeah. I'd go up uh, probably not super duper high, maybe as high as 60, let's say. Um, it really depends uh, because my age is not indicative of my uh, personality. So if I am seeing somebody that is much older than me, but still acts older than that, then it feels like the age disparity is a lot greater than it actually oh, yeah. is. Uh, so I would say just like standard on paper, probably go as high as 50 right now because i'm only 35 uh but depending on the right person it could be higher uh i might cut back in right now depending on how i feel in editing because god that was a tangent city about fucking old people apparently and also apparently something about taylor swift let's just leave it uh, yes <laughs> i love her you would and you've uh, made that very clear on this in many formats on this podcast in the past anyways we have to get to the last song yes the song perfect remedy of shutting me up is getting to the last 14. song. The oh my God, perfect this is painful. This is painful. remedy. Oh my God, that was painful. Yeah, it was, right? Oh my God. Uh, that You took almost as long as the song to introduce the title. Um, so I have a, a couple uh, things here. Where are we at? Uh, oh, that's down at the end. Um, anywho, uh, my first note was seven minute song. What is this? Did they bank all their time for this? And then I said a bunch of stuff and uh, I don't want to ruin it, but I end up saying, ha LOL jokes on me. I guess there's a hidden song and I actually kind of like it. I've definitely heard it before. Don't well, know it's what like, it's it like is. a traditional song. Yeah. I, I, and I'm... I was thinking Jewish wedding. I was going to say, I'm I'm very geographically stupid. I've, I've said that on the podcast many times. But, like, I heard them say Opa. Yeah. Uh, is that, like, a Greek thing? I think so. But just the music, Opa. how it was getting, it was getting faster and faster. <laughs> it reminds me of, like, the, the Jewish weddings where, or is it Jewish weddings where the, the kid, or is that a bar mitzvah? Where no, the kid's think, sitting think, on the chair. Oh, maybe. I don't know. And you're dancing with them. I, I know the very little about Jewish ceremonies. I know nothing about anything. I only know what I've seen on television. 
Uh, but that's what I got from that. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's Jewish, though. I Like, it could be Greek. It could be Italian, like yeah. somewhere around that particular area of Europe. Speaking of Italian, now I am just going to speak on the hidden track before we actually get into the main actual meat of it. Um, so the uh, the track, it is kind of like a what, whatever you said, traditional sort of like it, it sounds like a, a nylon string guitar sort of like a music. mandolin almost kind yeah. of yeah yeah and uh i just said with the yelling in the secret track it definitely sounds like upstairs neighbors at 3 a.m after drinking all night and all i imagine was like an entire apartment full like far too full of like family or um familial italians just yelling and talking so loud <laughs> after a wedding yeah, it's 3 a.m. and your alarm's supposed to go off at 5.30. <laughs> right? And like, it is I, awful. I can imagine that being so fun to be in, but when you're not, no, not so much. But that's what no, that's... so it's a very small percentage of people who are going to be enjoying it at any given time. <laughs> no, but I'm trying not to be offensive at, at any point. Um, but that's what I got. I got from this. It made it's, not, it's not offensive to say that being loud in the middle of the night is a shit <laughs> thing to do. I don't care about your culture. I don't care what you're yeah. celebrating realize there are other people living around you so maybe have some consideration especially if it's the middle of the week <laughs> yes exactly and don't start knocking back when i start knocking on the ceiling they start, it's not the way that game goes they just pound like this like don't don't and then they start doing like don't 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 like they kind of like do it like off beats them it sounds like a cool jump pattern you don't understand what you're doing <laughs> oh my god of course they've been drinking it's three in the morning they wouldn't know and, and then they get other things like broom so it has like a higher pitch sound so it just like it sounds like a stomp routine going on just like this is the opposite like the actual opposite I i'm gonna go downstairs to my apartment and sleep in the laundry room because it's quieter yeah. in there <laughs> yeah or go to work like three hours early <laughs> ew aye, aye, aye. i mean technically i could because i go Under from my bedroom desk. to my office right so well that's easy i work from home it's fine full-time job baby all right, so yes, uh, I kind of wrote this one as like a, I don't want to say train of thought, but like it's kind of yeah. in that style. Because again, yeah, seven and a half minutes, and I was just initially skeptical going into a seven and a half minute track, when three minutes has been like more than sufficient for the previous tracks. Yes. So I just said, okay, let's see where this goes. So let's see how, like, I'm going to just write, uh, read these as I wrote them on the, the sheet here. Uh, the intro was kind of nice. I like the gentler feeling of the guitars. That was pretty cool. Uh, I really like the power and energy of the louder guitars when they kicked in. Kind of reminded me of the Foo Fighters a little bit, actually. Oh. It just kind of reminds me of when we listened to the uh, the color and shape or shape and color, whatever, either. Okay. Or. But yeah, it kind of gave me that vibe. Uh, the verse was ultimately a, a little underwhelming, but the chorus definitely made up for it. Um, and then that's where I wrote, yes, we've been had because it isn't a seven and a half minute track at all. It is exactly four minutes and 29 seconds. There is about a minute and two seconds of silence. And that's when the bonus thing kicks in where it's like, yeah, it's like this kind of like traditional sounding. I'm going to say Greek, but we could both be yeah. wrong. I have no idea. Uh, this traditional song that kicks in with like the mandolin and everything like that. And then you, just, you hear them yelling at each other. Every once in a while, they sound like they're celebrating, but then towards the end, they just start having freakouts. Like I yeah. literally hear the guy go. It, okay, so it just popped into my head. I think it's that song where it goes, and then it gets faster and faster. So anyone yeah, listening, it, it that, if you really know what that one. is, tell us, please. It starts, it starts out pretty slow, like, and then it, yeah, and then it gets faster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's that song. Thank I'm you. pretty sure that'd be really easy to find too. I, I just typed in like traditional like Greek song, like, and then that, and then that's it. Yeah, um, yeah, and I, I kind of like at the very least this bonus track is at the end of the album on the last song, and not just yeah. like a skit in the middle of the album, i.e., like the Fugees. Oh my god! I'm just trying to find as many excuses I can to put cards up in the corner. Oh, of course. <laughs> but no, but seriously though, it's like the amount of skits they had on that album where it's just kind of like this isn't needed. This isn't mm -hmm. needed. Uh, so uh, it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the album at all, like in this case, uh, because again, I could just skip this part if I really wanted to. So overall, I actually really enjoyed this track. Probably the better one of the better ones, if not the best one on side B. So uh, I had that going for a good closer. Yes. Um, now mine, I'm just going to read just like my train of thought that I was having while listening to it. 
Uh, this sounds so much like the earlier emo songs, like what came out before really the media had gotten a hold of it in the like early Jimmy two- World mid two thousands. Yeah, so this sounds like uh sounds like emo songs and bands that would have come out or released something at the same time that this album was released. I'm sure they had some sort of influences in the music scene at some point. Uh, Even the backing vocals are so emo sounding. Uh, I thought about you in my bed last night. You were a thousand years old and had a million boyfriends. I rest my emo case. Um, I like how hard the guitars are going and the arrangement on this song is pretty good. The accenting guitar notes are nice and bright. I like that this exits the album. I think it would sound strange anywhere else. Um, After being broken up with in Sleepyhead, this song is a guy friend trying to get with me. Sorry, Greg, but it's not happening and you're being kind of weird. Um... Uh, and it is a two out of 10 danceable, but not really. I just want to. S- <laughs> oh my God. I'm so stupid. I can uh, <laughs> two, uh, two out of 10 danceable, but not really. I just want to sit on a park bench and stare off into the water and wonder what my life could have been if I had just closed that goddamn door. <laughs> oh, uh, and I'll that's it. That. <laughs> and that's it. That's literally it. Yeah. Oh, well, at least God. you had a lot more like visual <sighs> stimulant. Yeah, that, I guess. it's been a while. It's been a while. You called the dude out by name. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh, uh, I I hope that was something real that you just referred to. So I just want to go back to that lyric because I originally wrote a note about it, but then took it out because I realized like you're a thousand years old and like you you have a million boyfriends. I yeah. I, I imagine realizing that's like a million boyfriends at the same time, which is ludicrous yeah. as that might sound. Uh, yeah. Obviously it's just like a hypothetical situation anyways. But I, when I first wrote the note, I liked imagining that she's a thousand years old and has had a million boyfriends in that span. Right. So I did the math. Oh my God, you nerd. Okay, I don't even know if math is correct. I don't know if I did this All right. properly. Did you try? Uh, so like you, you do, okay, so what I did was I took the average lifespan of the human, which Google said is 76 years old. Oh God! Okay. That's, oh God! I know that's a little, uh, little unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so seventy-six years old—that's the average, though. But people go beyond that, and I hope so. That. But regardless, um, so you take the average of seventy-six yeah. thousand years old. So that means so far she's lived thirteen point one five lifetimes. Wow! And so in a single lifetime, <laughs> in order to have a million boyfriends in a thousand years in those lifetimes, she would have to have seventy-six thousand five boyfriends per year. That's, Not even uh, Gene Simmons' lie about four thousand women could ever match that. That that is that is multiple multiple playground relationships. They they existed for recess and they ended after that. It's like a it's like a polygamist um, web. Like you're already polygamous and you have many partners, but yeah. then like you you branch off of your own web and like have another web that connects into that one. God, I don't even know where the hell I'm going with this. Is that just a sex MLM? MLM. Yeah, where it's like, you, like, is polygamy just a sex MLM? Where it's like, you get one, and then you have like two boyfriends, but then those boyfriends find a couple other girlfriends. And they oh, find like a pyramid one. scheme type deal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Multi level marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I knew, I knew what I MLM was. I couldn't remember what it stood for, but yeah, yeah pyramid yeah. scheme, same deal. Yeah. yeah. So is is polygamy just a sex MLM? Uh. Uh, if you do the multiple web thing, then probably. <laughs> oh, but if you're just a, if you're just a simple polygamist, yeah. then no, they just have two or three yeah. partners. You're good to go. That's good. You're just a small business then. But if you if you're doing like the four dimensional polygamy, like yeah, polyhedron, oh <laughs> then my chances God. are everything will meet back to you in the center at one point, but everything else is also connected. So any of those like uh, conferences or meetings or whatever that you see for these crazy pyramid schemes and whatnot. Uh, that whole room would be full. They would just be every, like everyone in that room would be like romantically linked to everyone else in that room somehow. But they only fuck you. So there's like, there's like 300 people in that room. You get to sit on a throne on the stage and then everyone lines up like a graduation procession. You have to do a raffle to see which one of them is going to get the money shot because I don't have that much. Okay. (laughs) Hey, apparently this song is about sex, so really, we're actually kind of on top of Oh my god, this. hard times in this economy. Oh man, imagine that a raffle, anyway. 
19 plus only at this raffle, baby. Oh my God. <laughs> All righty then. We yeah, we're done. <laughs> pull our heads out of the gutter, and that's uh, the end of Gob's The World According to Gob. We're done talking about it right now at the very least. So, hey, you know what? Thank you very much for making it all the way to this part of the review. If you indeed did, if you could stand us oh, talking God, about these how? weird tangents and everything like that. Uh, if you are still here, then make sure you let us know what you think of this album down in the comments below, because assuming that you've listened to it in order to... Uh, understand all the points we're talking about we'd love to hear what you have to say but you can always tell us more because now it's time for part two or three of the podcast which is ranking the songs so without further ado above our heads boom graphics have changed there are names there are numbers so it's gonna be more names song names to be specific because now this is where we take all 14 tracks and we rank them from worst to best least favorite to favorite not so great to great whatever you want to rank it and as we rank that's the what record. we're doing after this Ooh, yeah I knew my my time was coming. Now that's a joke you've definitely run into the ground by now. Or you just coming off with Wraith the record. <laughs> I will never stop. You will, because I know you've forgotten a handful of jokes on the show in the past. I have the memory of a I like how whatever what you just said about? cut off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said I have the memory of what were we talking about? Oh, again? <laughs> okay. It sound like you said a word because I heard, heard Perfect. Okay. Yes. Haha. Ha, funny joke. Jokes. It's crickets. I'm letting. I, I might even put a cricket sound effect in there. You if know I'm smart enough. I I approve. I approve. At least I've gotten a response. I, I've had too much <laughs> caffeine. I'm too hyped up today. You're all welcome. God, it's like 10:30 at night when we're recording right now. So hyped up, Chris. Hyped. You think Ultimate Warrior ever slept? No. He just stood in a cabinet gyrating. <laughs> He vibrated through walls. I mean, like his molecules, like literally just shape shifted him. You think he's dead right now? It's like, no, he's not. He's literally the soil right now. He's the planet. <laughs> Looking up, just stationary. <laughs> he's just like, I wanted to stop. <laughs> <I'm> tired. <laughs> Set me free, please. Uh, okay, oh so God. how are you feeling about potential matches? <laughs> Forgot we're doing the show. Um, no, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I think we're gonna get one. Okay. Oh fuck. I'm thinking one for sure, and one one off. I am not confident enough to say more than two, but I think we'll get more than one. Well, we don't rank the runoffs, Jesus. A uh, one-offs, one-offs. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um. No, I mean like like the one-offs where it's like some random one, like where I don't think we're gonna get it, and then we do, and I'm like, oh my god, that's awesome. But I think we're gonna get one really close to the top, and then one somewhere in the middle. I think we're only gonna get one in the middle. Oh, really? I'm gonna say somewhere between six to nine is going to be that match. Okay. I think I know what song it's gonna be too. I don't want to say it out loud, but like if I if I if we get to an imagine I'm just like, oh, that's the one. Yeah. Like it, it won't be fair, right? But I I you know what, whatever. I'll I'll be on if if we get to it, it doesn't match, I'll tell you immediately what it was. Okay. So I'm saying two. That was my answer. And I said one. So here we go. All right. Uh song number 14, X Shuffle. Ah, 14, been so long. Fuck that song. I, I figure because you know what we talked about X Shuffle. I'm like, oh, she she's uh agreeing with me, but then we got to been so long, it's like uh probably not. <laughs> Did not like that one, yeah. Number 13, desktop breaking. Uh, 13, 144. 144. No, we did not match that one. That was the one I was thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was pretty early to cut off, too. Number 12, that's the way. Yes. Number oh, 12, that's the way. You're the top. Not bad. Uh, number 11, Pinto. Number 11, can I resist? Can I resist? Oh, there's your one-off. Number 10, can I resist? Uh, number 10, everyone push down. Everyone push down. Number nine, been so long. Number nine, X shuffle. Uh, wow, uh, those two are actually like literal like, <laughs> like switch matches. Good stuff. Number eight, looking for California. Number eight, no regrets. No regrets. Number seven, 144. Number seven, Sleepyhead. Wow, we're running out of options, but we we're going to get that are. one, though. Number six, No Regrets. Number six, Desktop Breaking. 
Perfect. Uh, number five, the perfect remedy. Pinto. You know, I don't. I yeah, still don't feel so like fast. our number one's gonna match either. No, like, it won't. It won't. We can we can match two more. They're not gonna match. I don't. I. Uh, I'll take the one. But anyway, uh, number four. Everyone push down. For the moment. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're so fucked. Yeah, we are. We're not matching. I can guarantee it. Number three, sleepyhead. Uh, I hear you calling. Wow, I actually thought it was gonna be your number one. No. I hear you calling. Well, my number two is I hear you calling. There's another one off. My number two is looking for California. Yeah. And number one for the moment. Perfect remedy. Numero uno. I like that song. Pretty good, pretty good. And by the way, you said earlier that Sleepyhead was going to be my number one. False. I get Fake it. news. Where did it? I, I where did it that lie? Dude from, I need to. I need that dude from Beyond the Belief to just keep it on coming on the screen. That's false. We got you. We tricked oh you. God. That's not true. <laughs> where Where did you have it on your list? Sleepyhead is number three. Number three. My okay. bronze medal. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Okay, uh, I was quite a bunch behind you. <laughs> but you know what, though? Hey, uh, got one. I said one. So that's the one we got. Yay! Uh, not exactly right where I said it was going to be, but hey, you know what? I'll take it anyways. Whatever. We have at least a match. That's all I can really care for at this point. Oh, yeah. So oh, with that... What's that? I was going to say continuing on the streak. Yeah, I, I, I think it's been uh, three or four episodes now streak. Oh, yeah. We got to keep going and going and going. So hopefully next week could be good too. But for now, until we get there, we have to go rate the record. There you go. There's your line that you didn't kick in with. No, oh, sorry, I already did that earlier. Exactly. So okay. did you miss that? Um, I'm not cutting him back in anywhere. Hmm. I gotta cut it. Well, anyways, that's what we gotta do now. So let's instead of just bantering, let's go about it now. Swish. Okay, then it's the album rating screen. Look at that. All those albums are so pretty. That A tier is getting full. Now the second row of the A tier can finally start and hopefully. That'll start today with uh, Gobs, The World According to God. But I don't know. I'm not feeling too, too confident on, on that. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, as if B tiers are a new thing to this show anyways, right? If you think this album's getting into the A tier, you better have 100%ed it. Yeah, and I, I definitely didn't. I, I do <laughs> not think. see that happening. I'm maybe, sorry. Maybe 13, 14-year-old Chris would have, like, put this in the 90s. But uh, you know yeah, that 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 was me like twenty years ago. So I mean, like, yeah, and your taste hasn't changed, so it's still trash. Um, that's the one who ranks my albums high. But anyways, yeah, uh, speaking yeah, of ranking my yeah. album high, go ahead and uh, give us a score. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the rankings already, and it hurts my feelings. Okay. Um, so for this album, once I chose to look past the occasional cringy lyric, some of these songs aren't too bad, and I did come out with a few new favorites, so that was good. But I did rank it uh, in the, what, B, B minus, maybe? Uh, 72.21. Is that B minus? Yes, it is. 73.33 yeah. is the cutoff between B oh, minus okay. and natural. All right. 72.21 for me. 72.21. Yeah. Well, that's not that's not bad. I, I, I thought you were going to rate it higher, but, I mean, what can you do? Just finishing off the math on my calculator here. Okay, so I just want to write down the score because I already know what it is, but you don't. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, this album is like a fun pop-punk experience. I mean, when you're picking yeah. and choosing songs, but again, as I said before, as one whole sit through, uh, I guess a little boring in the second half, especially, although there were good songs in the second half, like a couple. Yeah. Uh, and with that said, I still ranked it higher than I thought I was going to because the songs I really liked, again, just absolutely dominated, but then the ones like X Shuffle kind of really tore it down too. Mine came out to 77.85, so at wow. the very least I B plus tiered it. And so with your B minus, my B plus, we go into B neutral 75.03. Wow. 75.03, it is better than Therion, but not as good as Radiohead's OK Computer. I have not heard that name, Therion, since right? like, we did the show. That was like that the one. first season, wasn't it? Therion? No, that was second. That was second, second. season. Because that yeah. was around the time we did like Frank Zappa and Psychotic Symphony and stuff oh, like that. Oh, yeah. All the weird stuff. That was a request. Yeah. Like that was such a weird thing to actually put on. All right, then. Well, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but guess what? Another B tier album. Surprise, surprise, as if that's not a thing that we do. I wish Entertainment Weekly uh, gave this thing a score because they probably B tier it as well. 
But the show just should just be called the B tier. That's it. The B team. Well, we have a we have a merch line called B tier, so you can go check that out right there. Arca.ca if you want beard uh, B tier stuff, hat, shirt, uh, other piece of merch. I don't remember. We have mug, mugs. Mug. Yes, there's a B tier. I drink mug. from a mug. Yeah, but, but there's actually like, B tier. There's actually the B tier line, and like I really want to get the hat, but like I don't know. We'll see. But, Anyways, yes. Oh my goodness, that is the end of the episode. We have another BTR album on our hands, and that is Gobs, The World According to Gobs. So, hey, you know what? Thank you very yeah. much for making it all the way through the review. We very much appreciate you having here. Once again, let us know what you think of this album down in the comments below, wherever you are, because there's comment sections everywhere. Let us know what you thought about the album. Do you agree with us, disagree with us? What do you like or dislike about the album? Where would you rank the songs, rate the record? All that stuff. That's what the comment section is for. Let us know because, I mean, that's part of the discussion we're trying to have. Musical commentary. We give you yes. our commentary. Where is yours? Well, you can fill in that gap right now by going down to the comment section. Or you can go to any of our social media pages to rate the record podcast over on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and Threads. But guess what? All that found is all that is found at ratetherecord.ca. All of the social media links, all of the streaming links that you can find to leave comments on as well. Once again, that merch, we have the B tier merch, we have other merch too, and I'm still trying to work on new designs. It's just, it's weird to think of. I'm not a graphic designer, so I'm not super good at like coming up with this stuff. Yeah. Uh, you can request albums, and then of course, again, as I said before, the kofi.com slash rate the record RTR club, five bucks a month. If any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, you can check it out. Rate the record.ca one more time. All that stuff found at rate the record. .ca. Hey, there you go. That I should have just yelled sense. rate the record again. Yeah, you, um, you blew the joke. And, <laughs> and if you like us enough to go to rate the record.ca, fantastic. And if you don't, well, stay tuned for next week and then decide. And then if you still don't like us, come back the week after and just give us like a third chance. And just until you do like us enough to go to rate the record.ca. And who knows, maybe you'll, uh, it, it'll take you up to episode 100 to give us that chance that you really mm-hmm. like us. Right. Uh, and, and we got something for you on episode 100 because it's not every day someone hits triple digit episodes, right? So, I mean, right. like, if you don't like us now, you'll really like us for episode 100. No guarantees. It will be a live, a live cake eating by yours truly with just my hands and my face. Just, that's it. I was going to say, it would have so, to be only be you anyways because will, I'm diabetic. But, oh, shocks. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm diabetic that's and fine. celiac, so like the cake oh, you no. want, I can't have it either. Oh no, that's fine. I will eat uh, chocolate cake made with avocados and no flour. I will. Man, that sucks. That really. Sucks. Are you just gonna dip in avocado and chocolate sauce? Like, that's what it sounds like you're describing at this point. Maybe. What are you pregnant? Oh God, don't tell me you're pregnant. Are you pregnant? I'm not pregnant. What I'm was not say? What a weird fucking craving! You must be pregnant. No, no, because no, because there there are some like uh, recipes where it's like you replace the oil or butter or something with avocado because it's got enough fat in it and whatnot to emulsify and all that. But if you are celiac as well, you can't have flour, so it can't really be a cake. It really just turns into like well, a raw, flowers. like a raw batter. Yeah, but I'm not spending $11 at a uh, gluten-free shop to get their concoction of flours. You can go to any grocery store and just buy rice flour. It's simple. Fucking Anyways... Enough of right. being celiac for one day. I wish I could say that in real life. Anyways, once again, that's the end of the podcast. So thank you very much for joining yeah, us. Uh, uh, so just before we let you go, because we are indeed done saying things for this week, uh, Savannah's going to give you a little hint of what to expect next week, because that's what we'd like to do at the end of the episode. So uh, what the hell's going on next week? And why or why are we listening to The Misfits? Well, Chris, thanks for asking. We're going to listen to The Misfits because this month is Glenn Danzig month. Yay! I'm just kidding. No, it's not. Next week, we're featuring a band whose lead singer produced an album we've already covered on the show. So I've said his name somewhere. Sorry, their name somewhere. We don't know their pronouns. We don't know how they identify. (laughs) There's not a lot of female producers that we've talked about in this. You know, I'm going to find a couple of them. Uh, What, Linda Perry or whatever her name is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, She did Christina Aguilera's albums. Yeah, and Pink and stuff. She's really good. Yeah, she did did a lot of pop pop music because she had a great pop rock track in the 90s. Yeah. Shit, we got to do that. Cool. Uh, no, it's not the Misfits next week, and nor is it Glenn, Glenn Danzig month. I don't know if I'd <laughs> want to celebrate that guy for a whole fucking month. 
But anyways, yeah, maybe you can uh, connect the clues and decide who we're doing next week. Um, you don't have to look too far back, wink. Anyways, uh, until we see you again next week, go listen to some awesome music like Gob if you haven't, because if you're not Canadian, chances are you haven't, so go listen to Gob. And yes. we'll see you again real soon, so take care, friends. Bye-bye.